ഇപ്പോൾ ഇപ്പോൾ ധനമന്ത്രി നിർമ്മല സീതാരാമൻ മാധ്യമങ്ങളെ കാണുന്നു Friends, the format of the conference uh, will be as follows, as in the past actually. At the outset, the finance minister will make a presentation following which there will be a question answer session. While asking your questions, please identify yourself and your organization. Please organize your thoughts and ask uh, questions, direct questions, instead of going, uh, doing it in a roundabout way, so that uh, we can cover as many correspondents as possible. Looking forward to your cooperation. Now over to you, ma'am, for the presentation. ധനമന്ത്രി നിർമ്മല സീതാരാമൻ മാധ്യമങ്ങളെ കാണുകയാണ് രാജ്യം സാമ്പത്തിക പ്രതിസന്ധി നേരിടുന്ന ഘട്ടത്തിൽ സുപ്രധാനമായ പ്രഖ്യാപനങ്ങൾ ധനമന്ത്രിയുടെ ഭാഗത്തുനിന്ന് പ്രതീക്ഷിക്കുന്നു formulated based on the inputs that we have obtained during the nationwide consultations that we are doing. So they seem to come in tranches rather than at one go. So, but each time we are making a, making a clear attempt to also connect with the previous announcements that we made. Um, also give you a small view, a cameo picture if I may say it so. of all that which has been followed up since after the last announcements so we made last two announcements i can broadly give you a picture of uh, where they stand and how many are being followed up uh, so in my today's presentation as always i'll just give you a brief picture of what i'm uh, presenting before you i want to start with a very brief uh, picture of uh, the macroeconomic fundamentals that we have now before us and uh, also say if there are any uh, revival signs of revival some from sec from some sectors then move over to say about the measures which are being followed up since after after the last two announcements and then commence by saying the tax related uh, essentially implementation of taxation related measures just so this issue of getting technology into tax assessments uh, steps taken so that the sense that uh, tax uh, authorities uh, are overreaching is clearly uh, wiped out of the minds because we have made quite a lot of uh, concrete steps in that direction so i'll give a couple of slides on that and then move over to talking about what we want to do for the exports of this country today we'll be focusing on the exports and then the second is on the home buyers so today's uh, flow would be one i'm talking about the macroeconomic fundamentals then looking at uh, where the revival signs are in particular segments then looking at the tax related reform measures then fourth go over to the two segments that we are addressing with some kind of a uh, input coming from the government one of exports at large and also of the home buyers so if i go through that have you got before you on on the slide there uh, as to what is the position on the consumer price in, uh, index the inflation particularly uh, which has been kept very much below and uh, under control so technically you would know between 2 uh, uh, and a half to 3 to about 4 is the bandwidth which all of us are normally considered uh, safe because we've kept a top limit of 4 but between 3 and 6 would be any time better but even then the inflation has always been held well before f- under 4 so uh, the one of the very strong indicator for an economy is the level to which the inflation has been held so that is the first slide and the second one also tells you about the flow with which it went uh, moving over to the industrial production uh, in spite of all the um, worries that uh, uh, industrial production indicators showed in the fourth quarter of 1819 because it reached a level which was uh, fairly concerning most of us we see a clear sign of revival in the first quarter of 1920 and on the second quarter uh, uh, not really the second quarter but up to july end so that uh, straight arrow explains that the revival signs are very very consistent and then that is also shown in the core industries 
the July figures which were released only a couple of days ago probably would explain that. Uh, the revival of fixed investment is also very clearly showing a, a positive picture. Uh, between 1718 and 1819, if you compare year on year, the annual fixed investment rate as a percentage of GDP, you can see the bar chart there. And also for the quarter-wise fixed investment rate, uh, rate is going upwards. And you can see that it is uh, in the first quarter, 1920, shown a clear, distinct, positive upward growth. Then we move over to the fiscal deficit and the contained CAD. Uh, the fiscal deficit to GDP ratio, which was well known from the time the July budget was presented. And we've kept up the figures. The current account deficit, of course, shows a bit of a hike in uh, 1819. But uh, that is the background for one of the indicators of the macroeconomic um, factors. Then you go over to the FDI flows, on which there has been a lot of discussion. We can very clearly see that the numbers between, if you compare between 14, 15, going upward, 15, 16, 16, 17, and so on, you can see between 18, 19, and 1920, as of now, uh, there is a clear sign of revival. And uh, the reserves, of course, um, particularly at August end, has really uh, gone up, uh, as a result of which we have one of the best uh, um, reserve, level of reserve which is being maintained now. I'll quickly move over, as I said earlier, on what are the kind of follow-up we've made uh, on the announcements that we've made twice before. Uh, announcements were made on 23rd August and again on the 30th of August regarding series of measures that we took. I had reported implementation of six of the 20, 32 announcements relating, to, um, uh, relating essentially to banking. That was on 23rd August. The partial credit guarantee scheme uh, for banks to buy assets of NBFCs has been implemented. There are several NBFCs who have already benefited. We'll be probably giving you a detail, more detailed picture as uh, we go along, uh, not, if not today, some other time, but uh, they are the NBFCs are really re um, receiving the benefits of that partial credit guarantee scheme that was announced. Then there is definitely an increased and improved credit outflows from banks. The transmission of interest rate cuts are being affected by banks also. Just for your information, at this stage, I would like to tell you that on 19th of September, a day before the GST Council's meeting, I shall be meeting with all the PSP heads and talking to them in detail about how the credit flow system is going on, post are announcing partial credit guarantee scheme, and post are infusing more money into the banks. So on the 19th, specifically for this particular agenda, I shall be meeting up with the uh, chiefs of the public sector banks. Then this is where I start telling you all about the infusion of more technology towards better assessment process, where human interface will be cut down to the bare minimum. So the notification for the e-assessment scheme, which I had earlier announced, saying it will be implemented from Vijay Dashmi Day, has already been uh, notified. So on 12-9-2019, uh, the e-assessment scheme has already been notified. And the main features of it are something which I would want you to please uh, at, uh, listen to with intent. Removal of existing human uh, interface in the assessment procedure will be uh, the first feature, total removal of human interface. Assessment to be handled by specific functional units on the basis of automated allocation system. The allocation will happen completely automated by the uh, big data management uh, team, so there is no human discretion element into that. Assessment unit will also be anonymous. All communication to be made exclusively in the electronic mode only, and no personal appearance of any SSA at all. So with this major one step forward, we feel uh, any element of discretion leading to a harassment will all be uh, removed, and we will give good attention to its effective implementation. This was something which was already announced, the document identification number. 
the particular uh, point which was the order was issued as of 14th august but with one month of implementation we are able to say that this is really taking off in that all notices summons and orders communication to be issued only through the system so there is no one to one personally handing out a kind of notice it will be through the system generated with a particular document identification number all documents to have unique din validation of documents issued can be done on e filing portal only documents without din can be treated as non est meaning in law it won't hold any good this was announced much was spoken about it i am not saying this is new but i am definitely saying post the notification in august we have seen a month full of this happening there's already a lot of people who are receiving this and there is a certain element of recognizing discretion will now be out then the um, the nomenclature which was given i do not know from where but uh, um, sabka vishwas uh, the compounding of all past offenses uh, which was partly announced in the budget the circular has been issued as of 9th of september what does this imply it implies that all compounding application can be filed up to 31st december 2019 which were not filed within prescribed time schedule earlier so anyone who wishes to have their application given can still give it till december and there is a clear formatted uh, tick box method of uh, clearing all the uh, past offenses and settling for a uh, pre decided levels of penalty again no discretion here this will reduce the existing pendency of prosecution cases before the courts so this settlement will remove the need for people to go to the courts to seek uh, redress it follow up action again on prosecution easing measures again a circular has been issued on the 9th of september and this will uh, have these following features smaller taxpayers with minor procedural defaults will not be prosecuted we had mentioned this but the notification and the circular has come out on the 9th of september prosecution to be launched only in deserving cases and to be commensurate to the degree of offense so the sphere of everybody is being prosecuted criminal action is being taken is now completely removed where it is possible particularly for small taxpayer procedurally small errors technical errors will now be uh, seen as small uh, um, offenses which need not go through the route of prosecution for defaults below 25 lakhs prosecution should be shall be shang- sanctioned only with the prior approval of a collegium of two ccit or dgit rank officers so it's not going to be automatically somebody decides to take action he takes action now the collegium will have to give an approval it will consist of two people top level officials now i go to the two main focus area of today the exports boosting of exports and measures that we want to take in order to boost exports this might need a bit of narration but step, steps which have been taken so far so that you understand the background with which the newer steps which are coming are coming uh, so that the whole measures that have been taken this this far will become far more effective you see that the interest equalization scheme had existed between uh, from 2015 and uh, uh, some kind of an interest equalization to the level of 3% to exporters and particularly for about 416 lines uh and for all the msmes were given and this had continued from 2015 then uh, the ias rate uh, uh interest equalization scheme uh, rate was increased to 5% for msme exporters with effect from 18th november 18 and merchant exporters were also covered under the scheme with effect from 2nd february this year 2019 so these are the steps which had already been taken up then you also understand the ease of doing uh, business ranking were changed we improved on it trade infrastructure for the export scheme the tai scheme were also been very clearly followed agricultural export policy was announced enabling products which come from agriculture also to find an export market 
then tra transport and marketing assistance which was given was also uh, taken up uh, from 5th of march schemes for the rebate which is the roscl had obtained ca cabinet approval for the garments and particular segments within the uh, textiles these were the broad background of actions which had been taken till now in the last two years ending uh, till february of 19 but now what we want to do is i will probably be putting the new measures uh, in about six silos which all relate to exports so under boosting under measures for boosting exports i am coming up with six uh, different silos the first one is uh, the scheme for remission of duties on taxes on export products will replace mei yes now i would like to draw your attention that the name alone has not changed it is not the roscl it is not the rosl it is remission of duties r o d t e p remission of duties or taxes on export products this is a new scheme which is coming and it shall replace completely replace mis completely replace mis not just for textiles but for all uh, goods uh, and services for which the uh, goods particularly for which uh, the coverage was given both by the textile ministry and the commerce ministry so this one will replace all mes existing dispensation in textiles of mis and the plus the old rosl will continue up to december 31st 2019 i wish this particular line is made absolutely clear the existing dispensation in textiles which is mis plus old rosl will continue up to december 31st 2019 this is so because a lot of exporters probably have taken orders and they will have to be given a lead time so we are giving this lead time however it equally means that post 31st december 2019 no mis will continue it will only be remission of duties or taxes on export product and that will completely replace all mis from 1st january 2020 so mis i repeat mis particularly in the textile dispensation mis plus old ros l will continue only up to 31st december 2019 now textiles and all other sectors which currently enjoy incentives up to 2% over mis which is already existing mis over that you had 2% will transit into rod tep from january 1st 2020 in effect this new one the rod tep will more than adequately incentivize exporters than the existing schemes all put together so if we are wondering what this new scheme will do will it be more or will it be less here am i making a clear statement that in effect the rod tep the new scheme which comes into effect from 1st january 2020 for textiles and for all other commerce related products will more than adequately incentivize exporters than the existing schemes all put together revenue foregone projected is up to 50000 crores so that is the number which i want you to uh, look at approximately we are saying up to 50000 crores will be growing through this new rod tep so that's my first silo for promotion of exports particularly for those which are going through from textiles and commerce very clearly labor intensive sectors will get priority the next silo in boosting uh, exports the measures that i want to mention here are fully electronic refund refund module uh for quick and automated refund of itc that is the input tax credits nearing completion and will be implemented by the end of this month itself 
so by september 2019 the fully electronic refund mechanism for the gst itc refunds will be in place this is expected to monitor and also to speed up all itc refunds so there shouldn't be lock up of funds uh, disturbing the credit cash flow for all the small and medium exporters and therefore refunds on your input tax should be automated and speedy the third silo in the measures to boost exports is about export finance this is very important and i understand post the board of uh, trade meeting the dgft is here post the uh, uh, board of trade meeting which was held a day or two ago uh, an indication has been given that this is under consideration i'm glad to announce and i thank the commerce ministry for having put in a lot of effort to get this through the export credit guarantee corporation the ecgc will expand the scope of ecis uh, and will offer higher insurance cover here i would want to just make sure that uh, some of the numbers can be understood um higher insurance cover to banks lending working capital for exports premium incidence for msme will be moderated uh, suitably which is when msme pay, pay their uh, premium towards Uh, guarantee that they receive from the ECGC the premium that they pay will now be far lesser than what they had paid earlier it is expected that the initiative will cost about 1700 crores per annum for the government but that will be the kind of support we are extending for the ECGC to offer that kind of guarantee for exporters um at the moment for us dollar based uh, uh, lending whatever the prevailing rate be this might come down by about 4% is our calculation but i'm giving you a rough picture and for the rupee it will be coming down by about 8% so that is the kind of difference it will make because of this facility that we are extending through the ecgc and therefore the burden on exporters particularly when they borrow and uh, take credit and uh, do their business uh, the burden shall come down the credit insurance scheme export credit insurance scheme will benefit because of this extension of 1700 crore per annum from the government for the promotion of uh, credit guarantee by the ecgc so this will enable reduction in the overall cost of export credit including in interest rates especially to the msmes the next silo is on the priority sector lending norms for export credit these have been examined and enabling guidelines are under consideration with the rbi we have had extensive discussion with the reserve bank of india on this and they are on board i am sure sooner they will also be able to release uh, the necessary notification for this this will release an additional 36000 crores to up to 68000 crores as export credit under priority sector because banks use this in their basket of lending portfolios when the priority sector lending category comes with this additional infusion priority sector lending for export credit will increase and this will give greater uh, uh, impetus for export sector then the next silo under measures to boost exports is the data on export finance is regularly published by the rbi however now export finance will be actively monitored by an interministerial working group so that there is hopefully if this is going to um, uh, immediately make a big difference this might even uh, look at it on a weekly basis so interministerial working group is being formed which will monitor export finance actively and that will be located in the department of commerce the department of commerce will run it and and it will also be tra tracked through a dashboard uh, reviewed uh, with institutions and also with being carried out where necessary so the interministerial group will do a weekly monitoring export finance will be continuously checked 
and also making sure the dashboard is available for everyone to see as to where the money is going and where it is getting clogged up so that we can help remove any congestion. The next silo on export facilitation is uh, leverage technology to reduce time to export or turnaround time. This is a very important uh, step forward. Uh, technology is further being used so that the initial time which is being taken uh, to uh, the time to export that is being taken at each of the ports will come down. For an example, I was just when we were discussing, uh, ports like Boston take 0.55 days only for a turnaround, which is less than half a day. Shanghai takes about 0.83 days, whereas uh, best of India, which is Kuchi, takes 1.10 days. Now, we are using technology to make sure all the clearances which are required at every port and also custom related and elimination of all offline material, manual services will all be removed so that quickly our turnaround time at the ports will also reach the best. So this is an initiative which we want to push through in this time so that the best of performance can help in more faster clearances at the ports. An action plan to reduce time to export or the turnaround time in airports and ports benchmarked to the international standards, which is what I read out to you with the examples of Boston and Shanghai, will also be taken up and it will be completely implemented by December 2019, which is in another three months' time, maximum of two and a half months' time. Actual turnaround time will be published in real time for everyone to see for each port and airport to push them to improve performance. So that's going to be available for you and me to see and we can always monitor so that there's a greater sense of competition among ports. An interministerial group again will be made accountable for this. So it's not as if we've directed people, we are just waiting for them to implement it. We shall be monitoring it through an interministerial group. And the last but a very populist and attractive option is India shall hold annual mega shopping festivals like the way you hear in Dubai of uh, uh, in an organized large-scale basis um, and across the country in four different destinations. By March 2020, it should happen. The themes shall vary. There shall be uh, gems and jewelry, handicrafts, yoga, tourism, textiles and leather so that there is a greater push and promotion a global thrust for immediately for people to come and see and um, make their connections, make their contacts for large-scale purchases or for instantly having ideas of connection between manufacturers and sellers. So this mega shopping festivals will enthuse all these small and medium manufacturers of our handicrafts and also who are linked with tourism to benefit from. So in order to boost exports, these are some of the main uh, steps. The fifth uh, silo in my case is uh, the free trade agreements. We like to uh, clearly indicate to you and through you the special FTA agreements that uh, FTA agreement utilization mission that we want to launch. What does that indicate? We have several FTAs and the sense whenever we interact with the industry or uh, exporters is that they don't seem to optimally utilize the existing FTAs leading to periodically even you from the media have asked us, are you reviewing the FTAs? Here what we are telling you is for an effective utilization of the FTAs which uh, already are uh, with us, uh, a senior officer from the Department of Commerce will be set, set up to monitor an FTA utilization mission. What would he or she do? To work exclusively with the Federation of Export Organization and with the export houses. You know there are uh, nearly 30, 32 export related associations, federations which are partly associated with the uh, Commerce Ministry 
all of them will be uh, given a clear uh, uh, introduction to how to use all the concessional tariffs that exist in each of the FTA for want of use, for want of maximum utilization of the concessional tariff which is already built in each of the FTAs, we find that many of the exporters are at a loss. Whereas when we find the other end of the FTA utilizing the uh, features which are given, uh, they tend to better benefit from the Indian markets, whereas our exporters, for want of link or want of awareness or want of understanding the nuance which prevails in the FTA, don't benefit so much. So this mission, with the senior officer heading it, will immediately spend a lot of time looking at how to maximum utilize the concessional tariffs which are built in FTAs, enhance awareness of preferential duty, which is another area where we find many of our exporters are not really optimally benefiting from. So the preferential duty benefits uh, which exist will have to be now widely spread among the MSMEs. So the dissemination of this information and facilitation so that compliance requirements such as the rules of origin, certificate of origin can all be much more streamlined, methodically used and the exporters are not left to fend for themselves. And this will be available for the importers and exporters. And the set goals for FTA utilization uh, are also put in place so that effective FTA monitoring system can be run. So this will come into play immediately so that any MSME, any exporter who wants to benefit from greater information can utilize the service. Uh, the other uh, matter is on the origin management system. We find that most often the, under the rules of origin, most of our exporters suffer. For exporters to enable them to obtain certificate of origin, uh, there will be uh, on origin, origin management system which will be launched in the next few weeks by the DGFT. I'm glad that DGFT is here. Uh, he, if you have any questions, he can also answer. And uh, this will be uh, in collaboration with export inspection councils because they, are, they play a very critical role in this. So the DGFT together with the export ins, in, inspection council will activate this. This is ex expected to significantly improve ease of doing business for the exporters. So that's about the free trade uh, agreement. And the fifth silo, the last but one at the, for the export uh, measures, time-bound adoption of mandatory technical standards. This is an area which I'd like to highlight to all of you all. There shall be time-bound adoption by industry of all necessary mandatory technical standards and their effective enforcement to elevate the quality of and performance of the ecosystem, enhance competitiveness and address the issue of substandard imports. I, I need not, I'm sure all of you are aware, I need not underline the importance of this particular measure. Whilst it's important for quality uh, determination of our export products, most often the imports which come in and the quality of the imports, the standards that they stand up to are matters of great concern. So now it is very clearly something on which all the ministries are going to be working together so that we will in a time-bound manner adopt standards which are necessary, technical standards which have to be put out also will be put out so that not just ensuring our exports are qualitatively superior, but this will be enough for us to stand up and check on what, what kind of imports are coming into this country. A working group, therefore, on standards will be set up again in the Department of Commerce to work with industry so that they can lay down a roadmap for adoption of standards, timelines and enforcement. This is expected to be a big boost in enabling Indian products over, uh, come, to overcome uh, any non-tariff barriers which are most often becoming a big uh, headache for our exporters. So in order to meet every such uh, non-tariff barrier with technical sound paperwork in our hand and established quality standards in our hand, we hope to make that difference to the ex exporters. 
Again, under this, affordable testing and certification infrastructure will be adequately expanded. There shall be enough money invested and developed with the PPP mode so that exporters get all internationally accepted tests and certification done within India. This is one of the, uh, I would say, pet peeve of many of the exporters that they spend huge amounts spend huge amounts going here and there trying to test their products but now this will reduce the cost of adaption, uh, adoption of uh, standards and also certification for Indian exporters so that they can meet global standards. The last silo in the measures for boosting exports is this one. Enable handicrafts industry to effectively harness e-commerce for exports. Here I would like to say a big word of appreciation for TriFed, which till now probably uh, was not even recognized as somebody who was doing very good work, but now they have made an extraordinary step in linking with e-commerce markets. As a result, they are finding newer uh, sources of export. So special dispensation for facilitating and onboarding handicrafts artisans and handicraft cooperatives directly on the e-commerce portals and enable seamless exports. Mass enrollment will be undertaken for all artisans across India with help of the Ministry of Textiles and organizations like Tri TriFed because textiles deals with handicrafts also. So mass enrollment of artisans across India with the help of Ministry of Textiles and organizations like TriFed CIE and so on will be taken up so that handicraft promotion can happen. Now we move over to the housing sector. There's been a lot of consultation. Till now the steps taken, a quick run through of what we've done till now. Affordable housing, you know, during the budget we had announced. Additional deduction of up to 1.5 lakhs for interest paid on loans borrowed up to 31st March 2020, part of my budget announcement, uh, to purchase of house valued up to 45 lakhs. In fact, I'd like to report to you here, I've had quite a few housing finance corporation companies calling me to say uh, this particular scheme has had very good offtake. There is a lot of response. In fact, I wouldn't even name the officials who have spoken to me, but now it's out for all of us to even check up that this particular scheme for affordable housing has really uh, taken off very well. And I'm glad for that, and I wish all institutions funding housing under the affordable uh, scheme, housing scheme, should move faster because there is a lot of interest among buyers. Then banks to launch repo rate or external... Uh, Benchmark linked loans, I'm monitoring it very closely so that banks do follow this uh, uh, instruction which has come from the Reserve Bank. As I said, on the 19th, I'll be meeting with all the uh, public sector bank heads. I'm sure to take it forward there. Then the support for the NBFCs and the HFCs. You, you're aware that the more credit support has been extended. And additional liquidity support for the housing finance corporations which was up to 20,000 crore till now by the NHB, has now increased to about 30,000 crores. The partial credit guarantee scheme for purchase of pooled assets is also moving and uh, from the banks further to the NBFCs. Once again, after my review with the bank chiefs on the 19th September, I shall come back to report on how much is moving on that. But that's also one of the things I'll be talking with them on the September, on 19th of September. Then uh, the credit enhancement for infrastructure and housing projects uh, organization uh, shall be uh, provided and that was part of the announcement in the budget. Then uh, debenture redemption reserve is a major thing, uh, a requirement for creation of a debenture uh, redemption reserve for outs of outstanding debentures in respect of listed companies, NBFCs and, and for HFCs have been removed. Then Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana, particularly the Grameen, you, you know the numbers, 1.95 crores of people will be eligible beneficiaries with amenities like toilets, electricity and LPG connections, all given during this phase ending 21-22. Uh, Within the next two years this will be done. 
So what are we doing now? The, there shall be a relaxation of the ECB, the external commercial borrowing guidelines for affordable housing. So ECB guidelines will be relaxed to facilitate financing of home buyers who are eligible under the PMAY in consultation with RBI. So this is in addition to the existing norms of, for ECB for affordable housing. So external commercial borrowing uh, guidelines are being relaxed. The next is house building advance. The interest rate on house building advance shall be lowered and linked with the 10-year GSEC yields. So this will particularly benefit government servants who contribute to a major component of demand for houses. This will encourage more government servants to buy new houses. The next, this, a special window for affordable and middle income housing is being created. This is a very important feature of today's announcement in that a special window will provide the last mile funding requirements for housing projects which are non-MPA and non-NCLT projects and are net worth positive in affordable and middle income category to be set up. This particular window which will be set up with a fund size of 10,000 crores uh, which will be contributed by Government of India and roughly the same amount from outside investors. What we expect to do with this particular window is that this window or the special dispensation will be run by complete professionals. They shall be drawn from out the marketplace or experienced domain uh, specialists who have either banking or housing finance related experience. They shall operate this window and they in turn will be identifying all over the country such projects which are middle income and affordable schemes related where nearly 60% of the work is completed and they don't have any more cash flow that they, complete, that they can complete the rest 40%. As a result, the middle income groups, affordable in houses buying groups, People who are waiting for their houses to be given to them but who invested and are waiting can now find relief in that through this assistance the project shall get completed. People don't have to live in a rented house, keep paying their uh, monthly installments and also not get their house in hands. So for all over the country, wherever the housing projects are stuck because they are not complete can now seek relief so long as they are not an NPA and not in the NCLT. So such middle income projects and also such affordable housing projects which are almost complete but for, are waiting for the last mile cash infusion shall benefit from this special window that we've created with a core of 10,000 crores of rupees. As I said, government is not going to operate it but certainly will bring in professionals who will run this. And we expect therefore uh, unfinished units will get completed. Government of India on the lines of NIIF, the National Infrastructure Investment Fund, can contribute to the fund, while rest of the investors would be like LIC, other institutions and private capital from banks, sovereign funds and DFIs and so on. The fund shall be set up as a Category 2 AIF, uh, uh, Alternative in Investment Fund Trust, and would be professionally run with experts from housing and banking sector. So that's about the housing sector. Uh, so broadly today we have touched on exports and also housing, other than also giving you a quick picture of what we've followed up on on the last two announcements. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we'll take uh, the first question here from the front row itself. Yeah. Ma'am, with the current set of measures that you've announced on housing and exports, uh, what is the total outgo? Because in the first scheme of exporters, we saw that about 50,000 outgrows of a revenue outgo it will be. But overall for housing and like you've also created a stress asset fund, how much outgo will it be? And what sort of a fill-up are you seeing with this in the economy? 
I've mentioned the numbers about uh, what kind of uh, investment, I mean, what kind of uh, government money is going in and what is the revenue foregone. But the, uh, but the sectors are such, sectors meaning the export sectors and within the export area we are uh, touching on labor intensive uh, exporters and also giving a special uh, dispensation for uh, promotion of handicrafts. So we expect that it will immediately impact a lot of uh, rural artisans and also small and medium units which are on an export drive. So the, uh, also the ambiguity about the continuation of MEIS is cleared. We have given a better uh, scheme which will now take care of the requirements of support which the exporters would have needed and therefore we expect that to immediately uh, impact on all the SME exporters, those who belong to labor intensive sectors. That is one. And second on the housing. The way, the, 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 the way we have worked at 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 the way we have worked